Hello and welcome to another video of Archeometallurgie.de. Today is all about examining a cast handgun. To this end, I'm going to have to cut one of these handguns in two parts, down the middle, grind, polish and etch that section and then examine it under the metallographic microscope. This is sort of an introduction into metallography of bronze cast things. So all this is, it's really just a glimpse into metallography. I'm going to introduce a few basic terms and work with them. And then, should you be interested, I'll probably make more videos about it. Let's have a look how well I have done with the casting. This is a perfect example why you always have to be careful if you're dealing with cast objects, especially if you intend to use them as firearms. We can see a few casting defects and we'll have to decide as to whether these are problematic or not. To this end, let's head over to the prep lab, give this section a proper grind and polish and then we can see. This section has now been fully ground. This is a 1200 grit paper and is now ready for polishing. Here we are at the polishing disc. The first polishing step is three micron diamond. In dem Fall Diamanten. The polish is agreeable, but I think I'll go on. I can live with that polish, especially as this is going to be etched as a next step. Here you can see how well or how bad it is polished. Let's focus on the surface and then on the mirror image. We can sort of make out a reflection. If we look closely at the section, the faults are immediately visible. What are they? Are they gas bubbles or cavities? And what are cavities in terms of foundry? Looking closely at the internal surfaces of this fold, we see that they are rough. This points into the direction of a cavity. Cavities develop if there's not enough liquid metal during solidification. That is, the ingate was dimensioned improperly. After we have identified the first casting defects, let's look a little bit closer into the material. Let's look at the grain structure. I treated the polished surface with a metallographic etchant. This makes the grain structure visible. There are beige, brown and light structures visible. The beige and brown oval round structures are so-called dendrites. They are a copper tin alloy which is called alpha phase by metallurgists. The zonal character can be explained by differences in the concentration of copper and tin. The dendrite starts to grow as a copper rich individual and during solidification is enriched more and more in tin. 
if high copper crystals are crystallizing first, the remaining melt is relatively enriched in tin. This leads to the zonal character of these dendrites. The lightly colored phases are a high tin phase, which are called delta phase by metallurgists. It is hard and brittle. It is pushed towards the grain boundaries because it solidifies last. The term dendrite is derived from Greek dendron for tree, because their structure looks similar like trees. Dendritic textures are typical for cast objects or objects that solidified from a melt. The size of the dendrites is also responsible for the ductility of the material. The smaller the dendrites, the more ductile the material. If you would like to know more about the internal affairs of metals and such like, please leave a comment and let me know. Cheers!